Welcome to our service. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the words of the angel to Joseph. You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Therefore, let us seek the forgiveness of God through Jesus, the Saviour of the world. Lord of grace and truth, we confess our unworthiness to stand in your presence as your children. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. The Virgin Mary accepted your call to be the mother of Jesus. Forgive our disobedience to your will. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. Your Son, our Saviour, was born in poverty in a manger. Forgive our greed and rejection of your ways. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. The shepherds left their flocks to go to Bethlehem. Forgive our self-interest and lack of vision. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. The wise men followed the star to find Jesus the King. Forgive our reluctance to seek you. We have sinned. Forgive, Forgive and, and heal us. us. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive you your sins and make you holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Amen. Amen. I invite you now, if you'd like to be seated, the choir will sing the Gloria. God, in the birth of your Son, you have poured on us the new light of your incarnate word and shown us the fullness of your love. Help us to walk in his light and dwell in his love, that we may know the fullness of his joy, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So we now have our readings. This morning's first reading is from the letter to the Ephesians, the first chapter, beginning at verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, may li might live 
for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption, to take our nature upon him and to be born of a pure virgin, as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Alleluia. alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him was not one thing, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This it was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace, the law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I think that I can say with some degree of certainty that I was exposed to the Bible from a very early age. At primary school and infants we had daily assemblies and were encouraged to join the Scripture Union. And there were re weekly religious instruction classes. At secondary school it was much the same except that there was no scripture union. And from the age of about nine, I was a member of a church choir. So I was quite familiar with the Bible in the King James Version, of course. Later on, when I'd started work, I had an hour-long commute to the laboratory where I was a technical assistant. So I had plenty of time for reading. Part of my reading was the whole Bible. Started with the New Testament in J.B. Phillips's translation, it was being published at the time, and I got each one as it was published. The Old Testament I read mostly in the Revised Standard Version. I have to say that it was a worthwhile exercise, and coupled with what I had learned at school whilst, and whilst a choir boy, made me familiar with practically the whole of the Scriptures. However, if you were to ask me what is my favourite passage, I'd be hard-pressed to give an answer. 
be quite honest, I just think that there is so much I really like. I'm not sure what we should. Um, I'm not sure that we should be thinking about favourite passage, passages anyway. However, I can say that if pressed, I think today's gospel will be pretty high on the list. I expect that would apply to most people here today. This passage is totally different to what we see in the beginning of the Synoptic Gospels. Birth narratives in Matthew and Luke, whilst Mark goes straight into the start of Jesus' ministry. Although having said that, the narrative concerning John the Baptist does also echo Mark's start. The real difference is the emphasis on the word, in Greek that's the logos, being with God and actually being God from the very beginning. This emphasis on the fact that Jesus is truly divine and that there was never a time that when he was not. In the early church there was considerable debate over whether Jesus had always existed or whether there was a time when he did not exist. There were two different view viewpoints and they can be summed up in two statements. There was when he was not and there never was when he was not. A mere six or seven words in English, quite a few less in Greek. The pre-existence of Christ was finally categorically affirmed, at least for Orthodox Christianity, at the Council of Nicaea, which came firmly down on the side of Jesus being truly divine and always present with God. Or, as I said, there never was when he was not. It has to be said that there are still sects who deny that he was there from the beginning, or even deny his divinity. Whatever these questionable groups may say, there is no denying that Jesus is truly divine, and together with the Holy Spirit, truly one with God, which is basic Trinitarian doctrine. This is all affirmed in this morning's Gospel. Having dealt with that, let's look a little bit further into the reading. John points out that when he came into the world, despite the world coming into being through him, the world did not accept him. But those who did receive him and believe in his name, to them he gave power to become children of God. That word power is interesting, because in Greek there are two words that can be translated as power, dunamis and exousia. Dynamis is power in the sense of something dynamic. We get the word dynamo from it. It's the word used at the end of the Lord's Prayer, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Exousia, on the other hand, is more like power as in authority. This is the word used here. In my interlinear Greek New Testament, the verbatim translation, admittedly slightly rearranged, would be rendered like this. He renders it the right. He gave to them the right to become the children of God. And I do have to wonder why the translators of the NRSV didn't choose to use that rendering. This puts it quite clearly that becoming children of God is not an optional extra for believers, but a God-given right. This, coupled with all the other privileges of being children of God, redemption, forgiveness of sins, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the promise of eternal life, and much more besides. And that brings me to the epistle, which is saying very much the same thing. A point I wanted to draw out here is that we become children of God through adoption. I spoke about this in a sermon a number of years ago, so I must ask your forbearance if you've already heard what I'm now going to say. Adoption would not have been an alien concept to many of Paul's readers. It was quite common in the Roman world. For example, Caesar Augustus, the same who ordered the census that brought Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem, was adopted by Julius Caesar, which is why the Caesar appears in his name. Although curiously, this was done posthumously, at least on Julius Caesar's part. Mainly, and this was done mainly to cement Augustus's claim to the imperial throne. It seems to have been quite a normal procedure at the time. Adoption is an interesting thing, and one of which I have personal experience. At the time I met my wife, Liz, she was a widow, 
And she had a four-year-old son, Matthew, from her former, former marriage. After we were married, we felt that it would be right to adopt him. By a quirk of law relating to adoption, we both had to adopt him, even though Liz was his natural mother. Had she not, she would have lost all parental rights. So we duly put in all of the paperwork, were interviewed by a social worker, and after a short while went to the county court in Slough, where we had a brief hearing with a judge in chambers. He duly agreed that Liz and I were right and proper persons, and fit, to be Matthew's parents. Sign the adoption and sign the adoption order. This was sent off to the, recons to the registrar in Beaconsfield, where Matthew's birth, birth had been registered. And a new birth certificate was issued with my name as father in place of his natural father's name, just as if I had always been his father. I really think that when Paul is talking of us being destined for adoption by God as his children, it is just the same. When we speak of adoption here, we are speaking of us becoming children of God, just as if there had never been a time when we were not his children. This is tied in with redemption and forgiveness of sins. Through the sacrifice of our Saviour on the cross, we have that. Redemption and forgiveness, and all sin is cast aside as if it had never been. We are adopted as God's children as if we always had been. With that in mind, there is much more to come. Adoption isn't the end, but the start. And Paul speaks of this when he talks of being marked with the seal of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the source of the power, dunamis I think here, dynamic power, that energises us for God's service. We need to be effective in our Christian witness, in God's service, in whatever way he wishes to call us. And that calling can be to almost anything, according to our talents. For some, that might calling could come in some form of active ministry, like preaching, or even, even becoming a clergy person. For others, it might be a call to a contemplative life. We all have our different talents, which combine to build up the body of Christ. And no one is more important than any other. The humble cleaner, cleaner is just as important as the, the evangelist in building up the body of Christ. But in fact, in these days, I think with COVID and such like, I think the cleaners might actually be considered rather more important at the moment because of their acts of sanitisation and making things safe for us. So to sum up, we can affirm that with the church fathers, that Christ, the word, the logos, the son of God, is truly God and always was, and likewise with the Holy Spirit, always was. And that through belief in him, and in his redeeming sacrifice, we are made children of God by adoption. In other words, as if we had always been children of God. Through our belief in Christ's saving sacrifice and our adoption by God as his children, we enjoy redemption and we are empowered by the Holy Spirit to continue in God's service, each according to our different gifts and talents. Amen. So we stand for our affirmation of faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, I believe, I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ his, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was was crucified, crucified, died, and and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray for the church, the world, our community, the sick, and the communion of saints. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, give us a sense of your presence as we gather here in St. Peter's and at home for our worship today. Lord, we pray for your church, for our bishops Stephen and Alan, for Guy and Chris, our archdeacons, and for all who work at Dyson House in Oxford. We give thanks for all that we have achieved in your name, for our ministry working alongside our community, for relationships that have been made and can be further developed. As we begin a new year of uncertainties, help us to trust in you as our Lord and Saviour, to listen to your voice, to tread slowly and carefully, to grow deeper in prayer and love. Then, Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on us to do your will. Bless, Lord, our church wardens, Pam and Pete, and all the work that they undertake in managing the building, especially during this time of COVID and in their leadership roles. Lord, we give you thanks. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the world, for leaders and those who hold responsibility for others. We pray for governments in every nation, praying that they may work closer together, especially with bringing COVID to an end. We pray for those places suffering from the effects of nature. Especially at this time, Lord, we remember Norway and the village of Ask, and those many places suffering from flooding in this country. We pray, Lord, for an easy transition for those affected by Brexit for lorry drivers and for all those who make a living in and out of Europe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for our community of Burnham, praying especially at this time for our local schools, including St Peter's School. Lord, we ask that you're with Mrs Morris, the head teacher, and all the teachers, staff, pupils, governors, and parents. Give them hope in a very difficult situation, planning and decision-making. Be a light to the school community in their work that they are undertaking, and help all those who are suffering from stress at this time. We ask you, Lord, to bless our families, our friends and our neighbours, giving thanks for the kindness and goodwill of others helping us at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, be with all people who are ill, at hospitals, at home, wherever they may be. Give them courage, hope and peace and the knowledge that you are present in their weakness, pain and suffering. May the skills and knowledge of those who care for the sick 
be fully used to help and to heal. We pray, Lord, for our scientists, for all those working to bring about an end to COVID, giving thanks for those who have tested the vaccines so that they may be available to us. Lord, we pray for those who are sick and known to this parish. We, Lord, we pray for David, for Christopher, for John, for Mark, for Linda, for Kathleen, for Susan, for Simon, for Sarah, for Chris, for Brian, for Cyril, for Thomas, and for Maggie. Lord, bring them healing and wholeness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for those whose hearts have been saddened by the death of someone close and dear to them. We ask you, Lord, to give them your comfort. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light which no darkness can destroy. And we remember before God those who have died. For Mayor Agatha, for Susan Rogers, for Anne-Marie Williams, for Derek Pierce, for Sue Jones, for Leslie Wollstoneholm, for Jean, for Harold Wacey, for Elizabeth Plummer. We pray, Lord, especially for Paul Stevens, whose funeral takes place here on Tuesday. Pray, Lord, that you're with his family at this time. And also, Lord, for Chloe the cat, a very much loved and faithful companion. The word has become flesh and dwelt among us. Let Christ's light shine in the darkest corner of your life. Let Christ's love shine in the darkest corners of our world. God is with us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we stand for the peace. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to all in whom he delights. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace with a bow. Would you please be seated? Word made flesh, life 
of the world in your incarnation, you embraced our poverty. By your spirit, may we share in your riches. Amen. Amen. So we stand for the Eucharistic prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere. Mighty Creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, who, for love of our fallen race, humbled himself and was born of the Virgin Mary by the power of your Spirit and lived as one of us. In this mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused his light to shine in our hearts, to give knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. In him we see our God made visible, and so are caught up in the love of the God we cannot see. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name, and say our joyful hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it, gave it to them saying, take it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise, and as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise, blessing and honour and glory and power 
be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God, here among us. Light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Christ is the true bread which has come down from heaven. Lord, give us this bread always.
So we pray. All praise to you, almighty God and heavenly King, who sent your Son into the world to take our nature upon him and to be born of a pure virgin. Grant that, as we are born again in him, so he may continually dwell in us and reign on earth as he reigns in heaven, now and forever. Amen. We say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit 
to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Well, we now come to our notices. Um, I know, um, Jenny, are you, am I doing it or are you doing it? Uh, if you say it, I'll do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm saying it, she's doing it. <laughs> okay, so this is for the advent windows um, that were, um, I think they're probably still, uh, some of them are probably still out actually, it's still up, I know ours is. Um, but um, somebody uh, got the, all the answers right. They traipsed, I don't know, how many miles, how many miles did you do, Emma? Eight. Eight, eight miles she walked. <laughs> I think she deserves it for that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so the, the, winner, the winner of the Advent Windows competition was Emma. So well done, Emma. I suspect she might enjoy that later. Um, but also a huge thank you to all of you who put together windows. Um, it was a brilliant idea. I thought it was very, very creative and very, very clever. So uh, I think we can do that one again, Jenny, can't we? Better ideas for next year. There we go then, better ideas. And maybe those who are not living in the parish, maybe... We could get them maybe sorting to do something out around the church. That might be an idea, to do something around the church as well. Um, now, a Bible study this week will be on Zoom at 7.30. I've sent the link out to a lot of people who normally come along, but if you want to join in and would like the link, do contact me or contact Pam, um, and we can get the link sent through to you on Zoom and you can join us at 7.30. We're just basically finishing off the last few chapters of Acts before we start something else, but we've yet to discuss that. Um, so that's gonna be all online. Um, Care and Share um, has been open. We fed 26 families. So some of these families have six people in them. So huge amount of food got taken out on um, Tuesday. I worked in there all day Tuesday. So thank you very much for all of you who continue to donate food to the work of Care and Share um, in Burnham. They really do need some odd bits. So if you do donate or could pop some stuff into them, if you're in the high street, they're open Tuesday and Friday afternoons, two till four, or you can drop them off um, at the rectory doorstep. And I think, the pub are going to be taking them as well, but I've got to find out about what's happening with that. But the Five Bells might be taking, taking some stuff in as well for, as a drop-off point. Um, but they really do need tinned fruit, tinned meals, i.e., um, you know, chicken in white sauce, that sort of stuff, fray bent or steak and kidney pies, didn't really advertise, but that sort of thing. Um, and milk, so UHT, long life milk. They are the three items which I know when I was filling up some of these bags that we are very, very low on. So if you can donate, then please do. Um, I think that's all of it. Over to Church Warden. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Right, the serious bit now. Batteries died. Oh, the wonder. This one might borrow that. Or shall I? You can do it from there. Do it from, do there. It from there. Is this one on? Yeah, that right. one's on. Can you hear me now? Yes. Good. This is the serious bit. Janet's had a letter from the bishop, uh, which has gone out to all incumbents in the diocese. And it's basically said that we can close the church. We don't have to close the church. And Pam and myself and Janet in prayer have decided that St Peter's will stay open as long as we can keep it open. Thank you. 
this depends an awful lot on you. Um, for those of you that do have underlying health problems, that do have difficulties, we urge you to stay away, to watch the services online, and to protect yourselves. For those of you that choose to come, and it is your decision, we must urge upon you the necessity for scrupulously obeying the rules. You wear a mask, you maintain social distancing, you sanitise. When the stewards tell you where to sit, you sit there and please do not wander around talking to your friends because that will get us closed. If anybody does become positive, we close. And a major problem is stewarding. Um, at the moment, Michelle's gallantly manning the door. Um, but it's been just a few people, and some of those are not going to be coming to church. So we desperately need people to volunteer to steward for services. It's not a difficult job, but without stewards, we cannot open. And, and praise to Michelle, to Matt and Vicky, who've done wonders, but we need other people as well to step forward. This is very, very important if we want to stay open. And if we do close, well, we'll be lucky to open again before Easter. You got anything to add to that? I think it's, thank you Pete, um, yeah, it's, uh, we are one of the very few churches that are open in Slough, the Church of England, so the realisation there is suddenly that's an awful lot of responsibility on the heads of very few people, so we've really, really got to all be very, very careful if we want to continue to be open, but... I think for me, the communion means everything, and um, mm. it's that, it's that, that's why I'm open. Yes. That's why I'm open, nothing else, because we can do all everything else online. I mean, I can take communion in my home on my own, but it's, it's very different, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I also just want to say, um, I said it on Christmas Day when I was presented with it, a huge, huge thank you for the very generous Christmas voucher that I was given. I, it just took me by surprise and took my breath away, it really did. <laughs> I just, I've never experienced anything like it. Um, so yeah, I've been happily shopping online. <laughs> 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 and uh, brought a few things for the garden. I think the, I think the squirrels and the birds might be happy. <laughs> And some of the woodland might be happy when we're going to grow some other plants within it. So uh, thank you so, so much. I, I'm just so touched. So touched. I can't, just can't exp Well, even Paul, I sat there with Paul and I said, I can't believe this. <laughs> really, really touched. Um, right, any birthdays? Okay, now we have got one. Oh, Jay, is it your birthday? Oh, On Wednesday. Happy birthday, Jane. It's Jane's birthday on Wednesday. Very happy birthday to you. It's also uh, Jill Skur's birthday. So, Jill, if you're watching this, happy birthday to you as well. Um, and uh, let's give Jill and Jane a round of applause for a happy birthday. <laughs> so we come now to the dismissal. Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with peace and goodwill, and make you partakers of the divine nature, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you this Christmas tide and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.